It has been the summer of remote control flying. I am hooked. I'm having a blast. I'll tell you all about it. Hey guys, welcome back. So first of all, welcome to where Nerdy is Cool. My name is Paul and this is my YouTube channel. I usually do a lot of stuff about 3D printing, my cosplay, my R2-D2 and stuff like that. But today, I really want to share my latest passion. Uh, well, remote control flying, let's just spit it out. So this is a um, outgrowth of my uh, degree in aviation. Uh, it's applied sciences actually with a major in aviation and a minor in history. And I'll graduate in December. I'm just finishing the last history parts of it right now. Uh, so the drone part has been a lot of fun. As you can see in this photo here, I'm holding this uh, drone that we built as part of the class. And what this is is a DJI F450 for those of you that are into the drone world. And it was fun and a challenge to put together and of course program and all that stuff. And there it is all together. And once I got it up and flying, well, that's when I got really interesting. I even, I even got brave. I made a, a, a mount and got my uh, GoPro in on the action. So with a GoPro could record some video footage while flying around. Uh, very quickly learned that <laughs> a lot of buzzing, a lot of vibration, the mount didn't last long. But that led to the next part of the class going into the more expensive drones. Like in this one, we have the uh, DJI. This is the Matrice. This thing is like a $13,000 uh, a drone. It, it's basically like a truck. It, it can carry, depending on how it's configured, it can carry, uh, you know, a 4K camera uh, in addition to like a FLIR or a searchlights. I mean, it, 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 like I said, it's a truck. It can carry all kinds of stuff and flies for like 37 minutes. And this was the drone part of the program I was taking. And as you can see in these clips, it's a beast. So in addition to the drones, part of the class, we were learning how to fly the uh, airplanes as well, too. And one of the kits that we put together was the flight test Mighty Mini Aero Wing. And this thing is just foam board, and they include the servos and the uh, uh, motor. And essentially all you have to do is get it all together and off you go. Now, I wouldn't say this is a very good first airplane for a newbie like myself because, and my friend Griffin is doing all the flying here on this one, this thing is quick. Okay, so with that airplane being way too fast for a beginner, I started to look around for a good beginner airplane. And for the price, at 159 bucks, I decided to buy the UMX Turbo Timber. And this is a bind and fly, so if you already have the radio, you're pretty much set to go. You just have to get batteries for the aircraft. Now, what's nice about these aircraft is they have circuitry on board so that it has what's called AS3X. It'll stabilize the aircraft so it won't be so uh, bouncing all over the place. It kind of dampens things out a little bit. And it also has safe mode. So if you're getting in trouble, if you're heading into a dive and uh, what am I going to do? You throw that switch and it's going to level the airplane and it's going to reduce how much you can roll and pitch and uh, what have you. So that's what the safe mode is about. And that, this is the airplane that I went with. And I don't have a lot of video of me flying it, but uh, uh, this is the one that I started with. And I got to tell you that I... It's, if I had it over again, I wouldn't have bought this airplane for a first aircraft because when you're learning to fly, a bigger aircraft is way easier to see and control. The UMX Turbo Timber is a rather small aircraft. So I started being bounced around the skies when there was a light wind with that little airplane. So I noticed the popular airplane of the airfield for training is the Turbo Timber Evolution 1.5 meter, which this one is. And it even includes floats if I get brave and put it on water. And I bought that and put it together. And you can see how huge it is here with me holding it after putting it together. And after that, I buddied up with uh, one of the gurus at the airfield and started to learn how to fly this thing. And as you'll see in the next couple of clips here, um, I almost look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> the, the more you fly, the better you get. Yep. There you go. Oh, 
was a good one. Definitely got a thing for that short field takeoff though. Oh, that looked good, that plane there. The contrail. Oh, the contrail is the background. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and that star it. shows up too. That's an airplane. Is it? <laughs> it is. All right. It's way up there. Hey, you should have left it as a star, man. It was. Oh, I'm sorry. To our valued viewers. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Hey, it's still a good land. If you got a tail when you put flaps down, it's gonna push you like a sailboat. Yeah, that's why I'm only gonna do half. Yeah, keep the tail down, it's good. That's three for three. <laughs> right? Okay. Motor on. You can go to stop that. Hey, look, there I am. My handsome mug and my airplane, which is still intact, by the way. We're still logging a lot of flights. Having a good time. So a couple points I want to mention as we wrap up the video here. Uh, so for those of you that have your private pilot license or other ratings and you're thinking about jumping into RC, be prepared to be humbled because I can tell you I've been a private pilot for 30 years and flying from outside is very challenging. So don't think, don't have any ego. Don't think that you can just take this off the shelf, bring it home and fly and, and know it inside out. <laughs> You're going to have to undo your brain here a little bit. The other thing I want to mention, as you've seen in some of the takeoffs I've done and the pattern I'm flying, uh, make sure you know the airspace uh, that you're flying in. There are several, uh, Before You Fly is an app that the FAA offers. Uh, essentially, we have a lot of drones, we have manned aircraft, and you know the, the federal government is doing their best to make sure everyone is flying safely and identified. And that's why there's some you know, the talk of the remote ID and some other topics that are going on right now. Uh, and in our case, we're near a uh, international airport. Uh, so in our case, we're flying under 250 feet because that's basically what the letter of the law says to do. So make sure you're familiar with the airspace before you fly. And finally, these things use LiPo batteries. And if you're any kind of techie guy that remembers the early you know, iPhones and laptops that had LiPos, um, they could uh, uh, pop out on you, catch fire, and do really nasty things. Um, so just make sure and just make you aware that uh, if you get into this hobby, you're going to want to get a quality charger. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you get like a LiPo safety bag uh, so that when you're charging or store the batteries. And just be aware that, you know, if you charge and use all the uh, specifications as required, you're going to have no, no issues really. Uh, if you do happen to crash and, and, and buckle a battery or it, it's bent or whatever, don't, don't use it again. So, so there's a little bit of advice there from me. Okay, that's it. Just want to mention, if there's a local you know, RC field near you, check it out. See what's going on. Look at all these cool airplanes I've been showing you. Oh. There's a great helicopter demo coming up here. And also, if there's a hobby store local to you, <laughs> frequent it. Give them your business. Yeah, everyone does their stuff online these days, but support your local shops. There's some real smart people that work over there that can take care of your needs, so go see them. Thanks for watching, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. <laughs>